Elkara Ham Radio presents a Time Machine Tuesday vintage video release. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at Elkara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elkara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and this week we wanted to bring you a video with uh, some of our ongoing efforts on the emergency communications trailer. And so we just wanted to show you uh, part of what we're doing, even though we're still getting it out in the field and in the community, we just want to show you some of the work we're doing, uh, working on our solar panel uh, addition right now, and some of the other uh, additions to the trailer. And we've covered some of that in previous videos and uh, YouTube or, or uh, Facebook and Instagram posts. I want to cover a couple things here, and part of that is we are and have been, our Elmer Don AC4DM has been making some custom panels for the trailer to go on the 19 inch racks. So the one that we were working on uh, this week is for the uh, meter and the charge controller for the solar panels we're going to use. We did uh, the video showing the two solar panels uh, right now. We may uh, potentially add more later. We want to make a custom panel for these, and he's already made custom panels for projects in the past. And he was uh, gracious enough to spend his time to help uh, show uh, KY4BDP Brian and myself uh, the tools he uses and the, and the techniques he uses to do this. And it takes a little bit of time, but you get a nice, clean result for your effort. So we got this meter we're going to be using uh, for the system, and then we also have uh, the charge controller that we'll be using for this. Uh, it's a little bit older equipment, but it, uh, we tested it all works just fine. And uh, it's only going to get temporary and occasional use. If uh, you know, if you were going to be doing something uh, more of a permanent installation for uh, your house or uh, business or something, uh, you know, you could certainly upgrade some of this equipment, upgrade to uh, an MPPT style controller as opposed to the PWM style. But for occasional use for us, and uh, the fact we have the equipment on hand. It uh, just means it'll be a, uh, effectively a reduced cost. It's money we've already spent as a club. So uh, we've got that meter, we've got this this charge controller, and we want to create a custom 19-inch panel. We've got a small 19-inch rack in the trailer and a, and a full-size one, floor to ceiling. So here's just the back of the charge controller. Again, you can have power in and then the power out. And uh, the charge controller will show you your charging rate, uh, the current status of the batteries, out, outgoing rate on the batteries. And, it's sort of the normal things if you've, if you've worked with uh, solar in the past. Uh, some of the newer controllers uh, can, can show you quite a few things and they'll have LCD, uh, pretty fancy LCD screens and all the rest. But again, we don't really need quite all of that just for the, uh, the trailer. Again, that's going to get some occasional use throughout the year. Uh, so again, this is just the equipment we already had. Now what I want to show you next here coming up is um, a small rack that we've put in the Incom trailer and a previous custom panel that Don did using the same techniques we're going to show you here in this video. So in this picture if you can sort of imagine to your right, uh, right at the end of this desk, there's a floor to ceiling 19 inch rack that we've now installed. So we have the short one and we have the tall one and while you're sitting at this desk and we have the window there right in front of us just to the left, you'll be able to see the status of the house batteries if you're on shore power and then of course the solar as we're putting together now and we'll have other equipment uh, potentially in this rack as well some other battery backups and things so it's all going to be right there uh, handily visible so we're going to kind of show you how to make a panel similar to this one we see on the screen so this is kind of what we ended up with before paint and so we had the um, uh, the power meter which will kind of be that uh, that hole uh, on the left and then we have the charge controller which is the rectangular hole on the right and so what we want to kind of cover is sort of some of the tools and techniques on how we got to this stage uh, and then we'll kind of finish off there towards the end of this little video with uh, you know just doing some painting uh, this new panel is going to be blue we had the red panel previous and uh, we're going to go blue with this uh, this next one so how did we get to this point uh, you know, and there's any number of techniques and tools you could use to do some of the work we're about to talk about. We're just going to show you what uh, what we had on hand and what we did. So a lot of it begins with uh, Don had already pre-measured and pre-cut uh, the panel size. Again, he's made a number of boxes. 
for projects and panels uh, and things. And so he'd already measured for the 19 inch rack uh, size. He's already made some of these before. And then what we want to do is we measured the uh, meter, which you can see sitting there on the table. We also measured that charge controller. And of course we found the center of, uh, of this piece of aluminum. And then we wanted to uh, find the centers of each of you know, the right hand and left hand where we wanted to put the meters and the controllers. And we just start laying all that out with pencil so that we can begin to uh, make sure things are going to be where we want them to be visually and uh, then we'll start uh, you know drilling and, and doing the things that are a little more permanent so you always want to uh, as carpenters are, are fond of saying measure twice and cut once and because uh, it's hard to put material back if you take too much so that's what the the first stage was all about uh, first getting the panel the correct size that we wanted uh, as far as top to bottom left to right and then finding centers and uh, measuring for the components we were about to use and, and now this is one of the tools I wanted to point this out I was not <clears throat> quite aware of these tools uh, Don called these knockout uh, knockout uh, tool uh, the concept I'm familiar with and he's done a lot of electrical work in his career a and you know if you're familiar with electrical uh, junction boxes and things a lot of times they have uh, what are called knockouts they have these little little round circles that have already been punched into them and you can knock them out so that you can pass your your cabling and conduit and stuff in there well, this tool set, and there's another little piece to it we'll see here in a second, this allows you to put a knockout hole wherever you want it. Maybe you need to put one someplace and there isn't a pre-existing knockout for it. You can just create your own. And so you can see the, the uh, little bits there, sort of a, a little bit of an odd shape, but they allow you to manually create a knockout of, of various sizes. He's even got some much bigger ones than we see here. And it allows you to put in, uh, you know, that knockout, nice, clean hole, wherever you might need one even if you know there's not a pre-existing one so um, uh, I wasn't really aware of this tool but you know for that kind of work uh, it's the best tool for the job and he happened to have one on hand of course uh, so we use that to help get some things started uh, again working with aluminum it's kind of in, in a lot of materials it's kind of good to start with smaller holes and smaller sizes to what you need and then slowly work your way up so you don't stress the material and stress your tools too much so again, just kind of showing the, the knockout, you uh, operate it manually, usually, especially with relatively thin metals. Uh, it only takes a few twists with a, a wrench uh, to make that nice, clean hole. And typically, you don't even have to sand them or anything after. They're, they come out nice and clean to begin with. So it was uh, it was really interesting to see this tool. And Don tends to have a lot of this stuff where it's, uh, it's tools that even if you're familiar with a fair number of tools, he, uh, he manages to bring one out now and then that's a bit of a surprise, but very interesting to, uh, to learn about. So here's kind of showing where we just cut a nice, nice clean hole through that uh, that aluminum, you know, fairly heavy, heavy gauge aluminum sheet there, and uh, again, don't even hardly even have to sand it or anything. Uh, there's no burrs or anything really. So uh, maybe not something you're just going to run out and buy unless you do have an ongoing need for it, but uh, certainly does this job very well. Of course, that's exactly what it was designed to do. So we started to make square holes. We start by putting some round holes in there and then you can cut out into square holes uh, we were using a jigsaw with a metal blade for this you'll see that in uh, some of the uh, pictures coming up and uh, you can already see we've cut out the hole for the uh, and here's kind of where we went in with the jigsaw cut out the hole for the more rectangular charge controller which you can see sort of towards the bottom there with the blue label you can also see the meter down there Now it had a round back part that stuck out in the two the two main terminals uh, so we did a multi-step process to make sure we got that in there and in there centered. And then you can kind of see on that, that meter down there, bottom center, that it's got four uh, retaining screws around the four corners. And then we drilled those in there as well. So we just took our time, measured everything. Um, you know, if we were going to be a little cautious, we would, we would do things on the small side because you can always take away more material, right? It's hard to put it back. So here you can see we drill the holes for the two terminals so that the meter would sit on the metal. Now we could draw the circle around that round part that sticks out the back, cut that piece out, and that would let it drop down to where we can then get a good measurement on those screw hole placements. And then we finally put those in, and then when we're done, it'll sit nice and perfectly flush on the metal and still be nice and centered and everything. So again, we just took our time with this, with these panels. Uh, you know, you're going to make it once, uh, and so it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of extra time in it on the front end. A lot of ways to do a lot of these jobs. This is just kind of what we were doing and some of the tools we had at hand and that Don had. So uh, we got everything um, cut out pretty much. 
there you can see the, the meter is going to sit nice and flat and uh, and you'll see here in a minute we just drilled out those four holes because now we can mark them nice and accurately up against the metal and you can obviously see the cutout for the charge controller so everything will sit nice and flush it'll look good uh, look professional and of course then on the uh, the outside edges and corners we'll put in some holes for the the 19 inch uh, inch rack mounting part itself so um, again it took a little time but it was fun to to see some new tools see how they work and uh, and see how to actually put one of these together. We knew Don had made a number of these kinds of things over the years, and he even saw that red one that he made just uh, a few weeks ago. But he uh, he did that when uh, uh, one day when we just didn't have to be around. So it was good to kind of see his process and see some of the tools he uses. So here we're just drilling the uh, the screws for the four corners of that meter, and that's one of the last things we'll do here. Uh, we saw that earlier on, saw what the finished product pretty much looks like, and. Uh, as we start getting towards the end here, we'll, we'll uh, finish up with some final sanding. We also put a, a, um, a so, sort of a commercial grade, kind of a stripper on the metal. Made sure that all oils and, and, and fingerprints and everything were off of it. Give us a, a nice smooth with the sanding and then, uh, you know, very clean surface with the stripper to, uh, to put final paint on. And uh, let the paint dry overnight. And I'm not sure if he's going to put a clear coat on that. He may put a clear coat after that as well. Then we can mount the instruments and, uh, and mount things into the rack. So there's how we got to our nice centered and even holes and everything for the meter and the, and the, uh, and the charge controller. And, uh, and that's sort of uh, some of the techniques you could use and some of the things you might want to think about if you want to put together your own custom panels for racks and, and things. Uh, or just uh, if you're building a box, a project box or something, sometimes you can't really find what you need. You could, you could potentially build one. So here we are getting towards the end. We're doing some uh, some painting. We've got uh, a nice blue there. We had the nice red for the other one. So we're going to put some nice blue on this one. Uh, we put a first coat, let it dry uh, a, a few minutes, put a, a, a second coat, and again, letting it dry uh, overnight at that point. And, uh, and then we can put final holes for the 19 inch rack itself and put the uh, you know put the equipment in there the uh, the meter and the charge controller. So uh, again, a little bit of time, but it, it should you know basically last the lifetime of, of the usage and look really good uh, in the meantime. So uh, you know he had the scrap aluminum uh, you know pretty much laying around from other projects and things. So hopefully these kinds of videos they seem to be of interest to you folks and uh, that are doing your own projects and trailers and things. And hopefully uh, these will at least inspire you. Again, there's a lot of ways to do these kinds of projects. But hopefully these will inspire you with, uh, with somewhat what can be done, some of the ways it can be done, and you can come up with your own solutions. So this is Chris, KY4CKP73.